uh, now Deputy Sean Kenny, there's um, 11 minutes remaining in this slot. Thank you, Cahir. I, I don't think I, I'll need the full 11 minutes. Um, I, I think uh, this is a, a very important piece of legislation. I am happy that it is before the House, and I am very pleased to support it. The original Criminal Justice Money Laundering and Terrorist Financing Act was enacted in July 2010. This new act transposes the EU third anti-money laundering directive into Irish law and requires firms and persons subject to its provisions uh, to apply customer due diligence measures. This is intended to apply to businesses and banks where large transactions occur. The lower financial limits around private gambling houses are to prevent such places from becoming places where money laundering or criminal pr uh, proceeds are laundered. And I think this I think it's particularly welcome that um, gambling houses are included because I recall during the, uh, during the Mahan Tribunal hearings that um, it was discovered that some of the gentlemen who came before the tribunal uh, had connections to, um, to gambling houses. I think one gentleman in particular had a connection with a uh, one-armed bandit uh, type of casino in O'Connell Street. And I think he told the tribunal he used to go in at lunchtime during his lunch break to see how, how business was going. So I think I'm glad that that kind of activity is, 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 is to be included. I think it also include, compri comprises the obtaining of information about the business relationship involved in the transaction and conducting uh, ongoing monitoring of the business relationship uh, in, to ensure that the transactions are being conducted are consistent with the knowledge of the customer, the, businesses, the business and the risk profile, including where necessary the source of funds and ensuring that documents, data or information held are kept up to date. There are different levels of customer due diligence that can be applied. A designated person does not have to identify information on the purpose or intended nature, nature of the business relationship of a customer or the beneficial owner of a customer where the customer is considered to present a low risk of money laundering or terrorist financing. However, the designated person must obtain sufficient information about the customer to satisfy itself that the customer needs meets the criteria for this simplified customer due diligence to be applied correctly. In situations where uh, a high risk of money laundering or terrorist financing is identified, the designated person are obliged to undertake customer due diligence measures above and beyond normal measures. Uh, this is the enhanced customer due diligence uh, procedures. The extent of the additional information sought and of any monitoring carried out in respect of any particular customer will depend on the money laundering or terrorist finance risk that the customer is assessed to present. The EU third anti-money laundering directive prescribes three specific circumstances where, when enhanced customer due diligence measures must be applied. One of these elements is where the customer has not been physically present uh, or for identification purposes. And a further aspect is in respect of a correspondent banking relationship. I think it's also worth noting, Cahill, that the enhanced customer due diligence measures also apply to elected representatives or to politically exposed persons in the context of business relationships or occasional transactions. Again, I would go back to the, to the MAD Tribunal and the Flood Tribunal where uh, it, it was discovered that, um, th there, you know, that, that uh, there were things happening that, that shouldn't have been happening and because of the lack of proper procedures, uh, uh, it, it didn't come to light. Only, it, only, it only came to light because of the, um, the MAD and Flood Tribunals. I, I, I also believe that the... Um, the anti-corruption bill, which has been promised and which will shortly be coming before the House, will deal with people who were involved in that kind of, uh, that kind of uh, behaviour. But I think it's better to have proper business practices and, and, uh, in place and banking practices in place that will uh, avoid the situation happening in the first place. Uh, I think with Part C of the customer enhanced diligence provisions uh, are also seeking to prevent political support for terrorism in the parliaments of the EU member states. I see this as a very positive development, particularly in the context of terrorism, which is very often, which is sometimes politically motivated. Election representatives must be open to scrutiny in this regard, and this is covered in, in the new bill. I welcome the directive and this legislation which supports it, and I commend it to the House. Thank you, Cahirlick.